arriving in Auckland in a massive hailstorm. It was really amazing to have the, the company of local riders. I mean, there was a peloton of us riding into the city and just getting absolutely battered. I was pretty tired and sore, but utterly elated. I mean, just such a massive relief. And I knew that would be my longest rest, my longest time off the bike on the entire trip. So got treated like royalty going through the airport, brilliant support from Menzies Aviation and got properly looked after by Air New Zealand. So, you know, I made the most of the, the flight, slept on the way up to San Francisco and then tried to stay awake for the second flight up to Anchorage because I would then be going straight into a night's sleep and starting at 4 a.m. New hemisphere, new leg, new team, and uh, the race goes on. Yeah, it's fantastic to be back here to actually sort of fulfill the planning obligation that I was set out to, to do some nine months ago working on the road with a great team, um, getting Mark through some really difficult terrain. I'm now sort of coming out of Canada into North America. Uh, the challenges just continue. Uh, there's a bit more climbing out of Canada, back into Nova Scotia. The challenges every single day. So off the back of getting a really restful flight, which was good, he felt quite refreshed from that. But we knew day one was gonna go straight into the hills and he's just had at least five, six days of, of solid climbing. Uh, it's been a tough week going through Alaska, um, then coming into Canada, into the Yukon and uh, British Columbia. Yeah, we knew there were some hills to climb, but it's just been absolutely relentless. Yeah, he's had solid days of, of heavy climbing, which has put him in a significant amount of discomfort body-wise, and has also found that a bit difficult headspace-wise. I think he was really hoping and expecting that, yes, once he gets into flatlands, he's going to make up some mileage, but... Typically the weather has, has come in, so the wind's actually a very strong headwind, so it's not quite what he expected. Coming across the Continental Divide was significant. That's in a watershed between west and east, but that still doesn't properly take care of the Rockies. The crossing into Canada from Alaska was um, remarkably straightforward. The Border Patrol people asked me a few questions, and they just waved me through, so it was remarkably easy. The only thing that changed on to the Canadian side was the roads got a little bit rougher. So there was long stretches of quite coarse gravel, that it's just continuous strain on the wrists and on your feet and on your, if you're riding long distances. We changed the pads on the tri bars. It's actually easier for him to ride on the tri bars on his elbows. And we dropped the tire pressures a bit to just try and take some of the road noise out of the, out of the handlebars. That first sort of couple of days coming through Alaska were a mere warm up to what was to come because in my mind, I had it the other way around. Alaska was hilly and then it all got pretty straightforward. But in actual fact, when you're covering 240 odd miles a day, it's all pretty big, it's all pretty hilly. Physically, obviously, 16 hours a day on the bike is big in itself, but when you were putting in over 3,000 meters climbing, back to back to back, it's funny because some days I was totally in the zone and dealt with it, and then the next day I would drop off and really struggle. And after lunch or later in the afternoon he tends to get these dips partly because he's already been up for 12 hours so it's a normal sort of rhythm to, to feel sleepy. We have a few strategies in place whether that's a caffeine tab, whether that's just coffee, whether it's brushing his teeth or using mouthwash or wiping his face with a cold towel. Simple little strategies like that can be enough to sort of stimulate and wake him up. There was a stint definitely that we tried all the strategies and he was really struggling and he said he started to do the whole slow sort of blink um, and that's the worst he's got I would say. After the first week in stage three I've lost about 60 miles. It's sometimes harder to deal with that. My support team are very very good at reassuring me to keep thinking about the long game, thinking about the averages but then for five days in a row to be not making target it's hard to not start questioning myself on the bike. You know I know the conditions are tough but you know is it also me sort of fading a bit? The emotional roller coaster can kind of happen regardless. Yeah, trust me, when you're 55, 56 days in, having ridden 13 odd thousand miles, you end up in some pretty weird mindsets. You just need to commit to not stopping. I think he also just draws a lot on the fact of just being somebody being empathetic to his emotional state and, and kind of supporting him through that. One of the big, big people I think is a big motivator for him is, is Nikki. I think his wife is, is absolutely brilliant. She knows him inside and out. She just knows different ways of, of subtly providing a bit of stimulus or distraction or motivation for him. You know, I go to some really horrible places on the bike. I kind of feel for my team on those days because I don't think I'm particularly good company. I very much go into myself. I just get focused on just getting through the hours. It's priority um, to keep Mark going every single day. 
uh, to keep the mood up, keep his bike moving, keep him fed, uh, the nutrition, the rest, and ensuring that the team is really in the right place at the right time every minute of every day. This team is is great because it's already familiar. You know, Mike's been across the whole project in planning and the logistics, and he just knows things as a team lead. He's very comfortable. Same with, you know, Joe was there for Around Britain and that was a huge support. It's been great to work with Laura again, who we've gone very well with, and I know she's, she's very good at um, what she does. The first time I've met Nick, he's a really nice guy. We call him the Mad Professor, because he <laughs> he's got that lab coat and the crazy hair. A whole group of new people and the crew are all clearly highly motivated to doing their jobs and working together. Mike, he's, he's very straight, you know, he's so dry um, in his humour and very sarcastic. He has a nice way of just bringing, bringing people together and dealing with problems openly. And Mark's pushing out the miles every day and doing an absolutely sterling job. It's been a very good week, the team's gelled incredibly well um, and, you know, we're, we're doing the best we possibly can for Mark.